Hi guys, today I'm going to review Bharat Electronics Limited. Bharat Electronics Limited is one of the largest defense manufacturing company in India. Uh, Bharat Electronics uh, started as a radar manufacturer for Indian Army. They established in 1954 with association with uh, CSF France, which is Thales now, uh, in order to made specialized electronic requirements for Indian defense services. So from, from a radar manufacturing uh, firm, it has diversified into several other products like defense communication products, uh, electronic warfare products, naval systems and other electronics pro products including civilian electronic products. So over years they have nine factories uh, in India and they have several regional offices as well as uh, overseas offices for marketing and uh, sourcing purposes. Uh, they, their uh, headquarters is located at Bangalore, Karnataka. So the the philosophy is optimized on its motto uh, which is quality, technology and innovation. So let's look at its milestones. In 1954, Bharat uh, Electronics Limited was established for uh, uh, for uh, manufacturing defense communication products. In 1960s, they set up a radar manufacturing facilities for the army with its own research. In 1967, they started manufacturing transmitting tubes, uh, silicon devices and integrated circuits. 1974, they started manufacturing radars and torpo communication for Indian Air Force. 1979, they started manufacturing image converter and image intensifier tubes. 1980, they started their first overseas office at New York uh, in order to buy components for their electronics manufacturing. And in 1985, fifth unit of uh, was set up in Chennai in order to manufacture uh, tank electronics. 19 electronic, uh, 1986, they set up three units, one in Kotwara for manufacturing switching equipment, one in Navi Mumbai pro for producing TV glass shell, one in Hyderabad for producing electronic warfare equipment. From 1954 to 1986, uh, they started uh, with a single unit at Jalali, uh, which is at Bangalore. Over the years, they have established established nine uh, units, manufacturing units, each focused on its own separate product mix and uh, different customer uh, focus. Uh, there are the the main uh, the the civilian products of uh, uh, BEL uh, has a lot of uh, portfolios like famous electronic voting machines and other other uh, they are also into other services like software services and turnkey projects F uh, let's go to the its products first one is defense communication products they manufacture uh, radios base stations and uh, repeaters uh, for uh, defense communication uh, which is radio wave based communication devices you might be seen uh, it's been used by army and policemen to communicate uh, between each other they can transfer voice data telegraphy and flash message <coughs> between each other these devices actually provide secured encrypted communication and it can be used with antennas to cover uh, longer distance and they also manufacture SATCOM solution which is nothing but uh, satellite based communication devices uh, this is mainly used to uh, for uh, used by the aircraft to communicate with the ground station or the air traffic control uh, especially in remote areas where there is no radio wave communication so these devices can be uh, also can be mounted on a uh, vehicle uh, in road transport and also can be mounted on a ship for a sea route. They also manufacture other communication devices like radio relay. Radio relay is a equipment which can be used uh, to transmit a weaker signal uh, for longer range like amplifying uh, the signal. 
then they manufacture military switching equipment which are the communication switching equipments uh, which is used for network control and management system for army then they manufacture strategical and communication systems which are used in tough environment and uh, remote places there is no network and so on also they ma manufacture tank communication radio and communication systems in order to communicate between uh, between two tanks or uh, armored vehicles they also manufacture encryption products uh, to communicate uh, uh, secured messages between uh, between two points either from individual or uh, between stations radar was their flagship product so in radars they have four kinds of radars uh, manufactured by BEL so first one is surveillance radar as a name signifies it is used for uh, surveillance purposes uh, three kinds of surveillance radars are there one is ground surveillance radar which is used on borders in order to identify people movement uh, and uh, uh, tanks or, or low flying objects like helicopters and so on and there is uh, air surveillance radar air surveillance radar are used to find out enemy uh, aerial objects like aircraft missile or uh, um, uh, high flying helicopters and so on then there is air traffic control which can be civilian or military it is used for uh, air traffic control then the next product uh, next kind of radar is fire control radar it is used to target the enemy uh, you should not be misinterpreted by the name it signifies it is uh, does not signify the actual fire it's about uh, uh, striking the enemy uh, with a mortar or shell uh, so this kind of radar actually uh, try to give you information about the target uh, like information like elevation range exactly so that you can accurately hit the enemy then there is weapon locating radar uh, these are for defense purposes uh, when there is uh, enemy mortars or rockets or any other uh, foreign objects coming towards us we can identify in advance so that we can uh, take in uh, opposite action against them then there is secondary surveillance radar these are used by uh, military in order to detect and uh, track air traffic uh, using various data from other radars in order to uh, have a conclusive data then there is uh, naval systems naval systems uh, uh, are made for navy as the name signifies uh, there are four kinds of uh, electronic products uh, made by Bell. Uh, one is radars. Uh, uh, in radars, there are surveillance radar and secondary surveillance radar. These are used for to find out uh, various friendly and enemy targets in sea. Then there is uh, sonar systems. Sonar systems are used to identify underwater objects. It can be enemy submarine. It can be sea mines or even it can be used to map the seabed in order to identify shipwrecks and so on then there is fire control system like i previously said uh, related to army uh, these fire control systems are used to identify and target the uh, sea based enemy targets so this consists of data computer and uh, radars to identify uh, the enemy targets then there is naval communication system there is a difference between uh, army uh, army communication system and naval communication system the main difference is naval communication system uh, they use more powerful uh, waves than the land systems because it has to cover more distance so it's a combination of radios receivers and computer networks it's used between ship to ship and also used between ship and uh, shore control center. Then there is electronic warfare system. Uh, uh, first one is electronics, uh, radar electronic support measure system. 
radar electronic support measure system is uh, like uh, if we uh, based upon the information we gather from the radars uh, we had to take an immediate action against it so it is used to uh, identify intercept and uh, uh, a threat and take an immediate action against it so it is mounted on uh, submarines uh, naval ships aircraft and helicopters then there is elint uh, command and sigint uh, which are uh, used by military for intercepting jamming and exploiting hostile voice and data uh, transmission within a military range so they will uh, intercept jam and exploit the hostile voices then there is integrated wa uh, electronic warfare system integrated electronic warfare systems are used in uh, plain semi desert area and mountain terrain region uh, for same like intercepting analyzing and locating jammy enemy communication systems then there is normal jammers used by uh, military to block unwanted communication uh, using radio cells in uh, within a certain military zones. Uh, the next products are avionics manufactured for uh, UAVs and aircraft. So aircraft mostly uh, I found it is for HAL uh, mainly for uh, light aircraft, uh, light combat aircraft, which would be Tejas. So. There is ground station and uh, they manufacture uh, ground station, ground, ground control station and data link for UAV. Uh, ground control station actually helps the operator to communicate between the uh, between the control station and the UAV. And data link helps you to uh, uh, have a data transfer between the control station and the UAV. Then there is cockpit module for light combat aircraft. Uh, cockpit is a uh, cockpit modules. In a, you might be knowing cockpit. It is used by the uh, used in, uh, for uh, having essential flight parameters like in, how much engine oil is there, how much altitude is uh, the flight is going and uh, what is the indicated speed vertical speed everything will be on the cockpit so they manufactured cockpit for the lca they also manufacture mini flight control system for lca uh, the various flight control systems are like uh, weapon control systems air air pressure and temperature control system data link controls and other uh, control systems as well uh, they also manufacture electro optics. Electro optics are uh, electronic uh, optical devices which uh, will be helpful to, ide uh, to identify far away objects closer. So in that uh, they have four kinds of products. One is laser range finder they, that use laser to find out uh, that uses laser uh, to exactly pinpoint a target. Uh, beyond a distance uh, so that we can accurately target a point uh, this is mainly used for snipers and artillery then there is night vision devices uh, these are used in uh, night or dark environment to have a clear visibility this can be head mounted or handheld and there is weapon sites weapon sites are used by uh, uh, in military in uh, uh, these are mounted on rifles to improve the accuracy in tough environment for medium to long range they can have a clear vision and have a uh, right targeting of the objects then there is EO systems EO systems are mounted on aircraft for re video recording uh, both day and night there are other major defense uh, products manufactured by BEL. Uh, there is tank or armored fighting vehicle electronic system. Uh, there are electronic system other than communication system and radars, uh, just like uh, GPS module, GPS and integrated navigation system. Uh, the display to increase the accuracy in uh, combat. 
there are other electronics products as well so they manufacture that then there is weapon system like agash uh, where bell manufacture uh, in collaboration with bharat dynamics limited so agash weapon system is a air combat uh, air combat weapon system where the where we can block multiple air threats uh, uh, just like missile attacks with a coverage of uh, 18 kilometers altitude and 80 kilometers ground range then there is c4i systems and accessories c4i systems and accessories are a combination of computer radar and radios this is used for, uh, by indian army to provide a battlefield information for commanders Uh, to make a overall picture or a, a full clear understanding about the uh, f- for uh, controlling military forces in order to uh, accomplish a mission this includes artillery and other uh, military equipments then they also manufacture and shelters and masks for the indian army uh, shelters and masks are uh, complex uh, complex uh, shelters which is manufactured for military in order to protect uh, the electronics the people and other objects from harsh environment and uh, uh, severe ca- climatic conditions on the civilian product side they have a lot of products uh, first one is e governance systems products e governance the famous one is electronic voting machine is manufactured by bell and then there are other electronic e governance systems like citizen verification devices there is also point of sale uh, and so on then they make uh, homeland security devices uh, just like uh, products like perimeter intr- intrusion detection system for detecting an intruder then there is surveillance system including cctv coverage Mm, uh, for 22 uh, 24 into 7 uh, coverage then there is uh, civilian jammers and other security devices just like explosive detectors under vehicle scanning system road blockers tire killers x-ray screen uh, screeners etc they also make some civilian equipments in telecommunication space then related to radars in the civilian side they they make two kinds of radars one is coastal surveillance radars to detect boats of all size by navy or coastal guard this is an important product for bell because uh, it brings out a lot of uh, money for them uh, and uh, there is a lot of potential for this product and there is also doppler weather radars Uh, this is actually manufactured with uh, this is actually developed with help from isro and other agencies in india uh, this actually gi- uh, helpful to forecast uh, severe conditions uh, cyclone in much advance and it is much advanced than other uh, weather forecasting devices they also into other areas like turnkey projects turn key projects uh, they they uh, they produce and they install uh, at site just like uh, traffic signal uh, integrated traffic signal management system uh, they run it um, then they also uh, uh, do turn key projects like solar pv solutions uh, for any any company or any enterprise then they are also into software development understand that the software development of bell is a self sustainable unit and they have a lot of software development especially in cyber security and other security devices softwares they are also into electronic commercial electronic manufacturing services which is a very important area uh, for both domestic and international customers they do uh, manufacturing services like pcb assembly and testing precision machining and fabrication opto circuits components and assemblies microwave integrated circuit assemblies 
etc. All right, now let me go into some interesting facts or uh, it's all about uh, what are its exports, how much it is indigenized and what are its subsidiaries. So on the export front, uh, they have an export sales to total sales turnover ratio of 10 percentage. Uh, no, they are actually aiming uh, export sales to total sales turnover ratio of 10 percentage from the current value of 7.3. So as of uh, this is an uh, this is an achievable target for them and on uh, export friend they have an order book as of uh, April 2020 for 164 million and in ex in exports there the products they are exported mainly is defense communication equipments night vision devices automatic identification system coastal surveillance system radars sonars radar warning system radar uh, fingerprint printing system evms casting uh, status electro uh, mechanical parts shelters etc mainly to friendly countries uh, if you see the evm supplied by the bel was successful in namibia for presidential and uh, national elections uh, now coming on to the indigenization and making india initiative by the bell the total investment on r and uh, as a percentage of uh, turnover was 7.5 percentage which is high for any uh, among uh, defense PSUs. I think uh, only BHEL has more uh, percentage of uh, research and development compared with BEL. And, uh, and 79 percentage of uh, BEL turnover is also from indigenous technology, which is, uh, which is a significant or remarkable achievement. And they have filed for 160 IP, uh, intellectual property rights, including 94 patents. Bell has uh, also developed several products related to COVID related products like CV200 ventilator system, automatic fever finder uh, within uh, an airport and other COVID related products, uh, which has an which has a high potential for growth and uh, it is also bagged best PSU award in 2018 by Dalal Street Investment Journal. So it actually signifies the, uh, the innovation and uh, growth potential of the Bell as a company. Then in subsidiaries they have three three subsidiaries and one non-profit defense in, uh, innovation company along with HAL. Uh, one is a whole uh, owned uh, subsidiary for optronics and two are with uh, uh, foreign companies one is with tails in radar uh, where BEL holds around 74 percentage and another one is with uh, General Electric uh, for making x-ray tubes where it holds around 26 percentage. In the new initiatives, they have made a separate business unit in the area of advanced defense system for Navy. And they also created a micro uh, separate business unit for uh, seekers and missiles, solar power systems, unmanned systems and uh, energy storage products, etc. If you look at the future pros, uh, outlook of the company, uh, last year company has about 18 percentage of turnover from uh, non-defense segment, uh, which is actually high. Usually uh, it comes around 15 percentage. So the company actually uh, aims to achieve revenues of 20 to 25 percentage of company's turnover from the non-defense segment because these segments are uh, these sales are actually uh, would potentially uh, give the company more growth in the future because defense pro uh, products are uh, basically from a single customer and uh, that is defense uh, ministry 
and it is also have a long gestation period uh, unlike the civilian products doesn't have that kind of issues and in non defense segment can, uh, company is pursuing business in the field of field like homeland security solution smart city energy storage product uh, like e charging stations solars space electronics including satellite integration network and cyber security railway and metro solutions airport solution evms telecom products a lot of products and uh, in future technologies they are working on technologies like artificial intelligence big data analytics internet of things 5g robotics uh, augmented and virtual reality and quantum cryptography uh, this is under r&t department as well as uh, with collaboration with academy and startups if you look at the shareholding pattern of uh, um, bel over the years indian government has actually uh, dissolved more shares in the bel right now it holds only around 51.14 in march 2021 they hold around 66 percentage in june 2018 from there they have uh, uh, reduced to 51.14 uh, which is uh, uh, which actually implies that the company is going forward with the privatization so is actually good for the company or uh, bad for the company it will only depend uh, in the future uh, future years to come and uh, if you look at the foreign institutional investors they actually increase the investment in bel so from 6 percentage to 11 percent near to 12 percentage itself almost double their investment which means that uh, foreign institutional investors are Uh, m- uh highly in- interested in it and uh, if you look at the domestic institution investors also they have increased their stake in it from 18 percentage to 30 percentage which is remarkable almost double so and uh, but the public shareholding actually came down because there was a more appreciation in bell share price so public might have been taken uh, profit uh, from it right now we can go into a uh, financial evaluation of bel it has a marketing market capitalization of 35294 crores which means that it is a large cap it has a current price of 145 uh, rupees and i am doing this video and uh, it gone as high as 160 and as low as 67 within one year uh, it has a book value of uh, 41.6 so it's uh, 41.6 per share so it means that uh, it uh, the current price of the share is actually uh, triple the uh, the book value of the bel so it means that the the share price is expensive getting expensive and uh, st- but if you look at the stock price to earning ratio it is only uh, near to uh, 20 when compared with the industrial p of 38.1 but there is a catch because uh, bel is actually uh, considered with the uh, consumer or civilian related electronics manufactured also so uh, so this is the p uh, which is low if you look at the roc uh, it's remarkable around 25.7 a uh, very high uh, especially for a psu uh, return on equ- uh, equity also very high around uh, 19% which is high face value is only 1 which means that we cannot expect a future split in shares so there is no uh, point of getting more appreciation in that point and uh, last year recent times uh, recent times they had a sales of uh, uh, 13008 crores with an operating margin of 20% which is high uh, with a 
profit after tax of uh, 1778 crores last quarter they had a sales of uh, 2320 crores with a pat of 278 crores uh, which is remarkable sale it has a sales growth of 14.4 uh, percentage in last three years with a profit growth of 6.18 percentage profit growth is little bit less and uh, in three years and it is an eps of uh, 7.3 which is okay then uh, right now we can compare the total revenue with the profit after tax that figures of BEL. So from 2009 to uh, uh, the 12 uh, trailing months, that is up to, to 2021 uh, financial year, the revenue has actually tripled from 4,747 to 13,008, which is uh, which is fantastic and but the profit has only grown 2.5 times uh, which means that company company is able to generate profits but uh, it's not growing in pace with the uh, revenue but still it is remarkable if you look at the compound sales growth five years 13 percentage three years 14 percentage but if you look at the trailing 12 months it is 18 percentage which is remarkable so expect that in the recent times company has been performing uh, in a very good manner if you look at the toll training month uh, combined profit growth also it is 29 percentage remarkable and fantastic job uh, if you look at the EBITDA margins it has been steady it has been go uh, it has been uh, almost uh, staying flat around 22 more than 22 range so it's good actually uh, but uh, it is not going beyond 29 or something and uh, if you look at the profit and loss uh, loss look at the profit operating profit margin uh, only in 2012 uh, to 2017 the pro uh, operating profit margin has reduced but from 2018 onwards the prof operating profit margin was about 20 percentage which is good for the company and other income is coming down which is actually good uh, the it might be income uh, from the interest or rent and there is interest costs also coming down from 11 to 3 which is also um, uh, good for the company and uh, if you look at the net profit net profit uh, like i discussed in the previous uh, segment uh, it's uh, it's only a double uh, grown 2.5 times and if you look at the dividend payout see it is 31 percentage 34 percent and 44 percentage in 2019 uh, all PSUs are famous for dividend so bell is a uh, wonderful company and it also provides a uh, good dividend as well so for investors this is an uh, important information if you look at the net profit uh, analysis uh, in the recent quarters uh, the company only in uh, December uh, December 2019 March 2019 only uh, they had uh, a profit growth beyond 1000 crores all other uh, quarters they have been making around uh, below uh, 500 crores Look at the ROC figures. Look at the ROC figures. ROC, ROE figures. These are impressive. Uh, see, from uh, it has uh, it has come down in from 2012 to 2016, but over the years ROC has been uh, going up. And in 2019, it was as high as 
0.46 and recent times also it is high so the main reason for this company is utilizing its uh, um, debt and uh, equity very well so it's a it's positive for the company roe also for a, on the equity side also it's very uh, positive for the company and uh, roa was uh, flat but usually it was it is like that now we are going on to the risk factors in risk factors we are uh, we can look at the debt position they have only uh, less debt long term uh, fund based debt of 500 crores and long term unallocated and uh, long term term loan of uh, uh, 100 crores so altogether it would be around uh, uh, 900 crores but as of balance and cash uh, cash and bank balance they have more than 1600 crores as of march 31st 2020 which means that the company is almost debt free and uh, but they have a, a non fund based short term credit of uh, 3500 crores so uh, which is i ikra a1 plus vfm but if you look at the long term credit they are given triple a rating by ikra uh, which is the highest rating for any company uh, so on debt position uh, the company is in a well suited position and uh, there is no need to discuss about debt equity ratio or interest coverage ratio because the company is almost debt free but we can look at the business risk uh, the main risk for the company is high depends on uh, single customer or defense sector for orders. So the main uh, customer is uh, Ministry of Defense. So uh, company uh, for mitigating this risk, company is trying to get more revenues from the civilian products. Then there is high working capital intensity. So these uh, products require a lot of uh, working capital and uh, it will have a long gestation uh, period for orders to get ex executed and getting money from the customers uh, from defense and so on so there is a high working capital intensity which is risk for the company and there is technological obsolescence risk this can be mitigated by increasing investment into research and development then there is valuation uh, one thing that surprised me is that uh, over the years the the book value of the share has actually come down it grown as high as 1115 uh, 15 rupees per share uh, but from there it has reduced to 41.6 in recent times I think uh, book value per share actually decreased because the, uh, I think there is a uh, share splitting that might actually reduce the book value. But if you look at the price to book value, it's always been high. That means that uh, this share is always valued and it is always value uh, traded around uh, uh, three times or four times or uh, 2.5 times the actual book value of the company recent time also it is uh, traded around 3.49 times its book value which means that uh, the share price is almost always expensive uh, we can't actually compare with uh, this kind of electronic companies uh, because mainly they have to be compared with Bharat Dynamics or HAL uh, because both are uh, defense companies and uh, these are mostly into electronics uh, sector but still we can just look at it like uh, in this one uh, we can compare with uh, so look at the p all the p except permanent magnet all the p uh, is higher these are all electronic uh, manufacturers so uh, based upon P, Bharat Electronics is uh, uh, of less valuations and uh, 
quarter profits also except PG Electroplast uh, it has a high percentage uh, when you compare with other PS and ROC is very high only permanent magnet has a much larger uh, ROC than uh, BEL and Honeywell also have much better ROC if you look at the price chart uh, with the current ma uh, market price near to 144.195 right now the current market price is above 150 152 uh, I haven't included but keep it in mind so in 2020 uh, 22 May 2020 it came as low as uh, 63.05 after the growth it made uh, from 2014 this was the lowest point wherein where it went in recent times and this is the highest point around 179 in 15 december 2017 so so i think that uh, above 80 rupees and uh, around uh, this price uh, this share can be bought above 80 rupees and uh, below around uh, one, 180 190 rupees this share can be bought uh, last let me uh, get into my insights uh, this uh, this is right now priced at 154.152 rupees this is not 144 so it has a low PE value at uh, 19 times when you compare with the industry PE at 38 but it is overvalued when you look at the price to book value at 3.49 so but still the stock is in uh, buyable valuation mm, but uh, it's getting expensive so careful uh, but the good fact is it's a good company good management a lot of innovations and the company actually operates in a good growth sector which is civilian electronic project products if company can manufacture more good prospective civilian electronic products uh, the company's prospective would be more bright than today uh, and uh, they have also uh, revenues from defense services also as well which makes a company unique in terms of uh, revenue mix so uh, this is a this is a good f uh, good prospective facts for the company so anybody looking for a long term uh, share they should always buy the this share but if you can buy at a lower share uh, lower price it would have been better like uh, right now the uh, the valuations are expensive so i think that investors can still wait to buy at dips but we never know uh, how it will go and the main risk with this company is uh, high working capital intensity and obsolescence of technology factors so last uh, Last but not least, the disclaimer part, I'm not an appropriate portfolio manager. So all the viewers are requested to take their own decision about investing. So thank you guys. Uh, give me feedback about the video, whether it is positive or negative. Thanks a lot. Bye.